Well, hello, my YouTube fellas and gals. So, we're still in action and suspense. We are on lot five. We're going to get ten books for ten bucks. And this is the first book. It is called A Necessary Evil by Alex Kava. I think it's how you say his name. And here is 2006 copyright. That's what the book looks like. This is what it's about. A thick one. When a Monsignor is found knifed to death in a Nebraska airport rest, rest room, FBI Special Agent Maggie O'Dell is called in to profile the ritualistic murder of a priest. The best in a series of killings, Maggie soon discovers the disturbing internet game that's popular among victims of abuse by Catholic priests. With this first real lead in the investigation, she wonders if the group has returned has turned cyberspace justice into reality. Then Maggie gets a second lead, one that leaves her stunned. For the past four years, she has been obsessed with finding fa Father Michael Keller, whose brutal acts against children continue to haunt her. Now it's seen he's become a target. When Keller offers to help Maggie solve the ritual killings in exchange for protection, she decides to ally herself with an ex elusive child killer stepping into a world of malevolence from which she may not return unscathed. Maggie knows the bargain is a necessary evil, one that may be made in blood. So there is book number one. Book number two is The Girl at the End of the Line by Charles Mathis. Mathis, maybe. Um, copyright is... 1999. This is what the book looks like. This is what it's about. Deadly Reunion. Nell O'Hara hasn't spoken in the 17 years since she witnessed her mother's murder. When Nell's, Nell and older sister Molly discover their grandmother has died under suspicious circumstances, they decide it's high time to find out why sudden death seems to run in their family. An old Broadway Playbill leads them to secrets of their grandmother's scandalous past in New York, and then on a merry chase to London and back to Vermont, where they are introduced to the family they never knew, a rich and eccentric bunch. The sisters follow a trial of adventure and mystery that sweeps from America to England and finally to a secluded island on the Atlantic coast, where a chilling legacy of murder awaits. There's book number two. Book number three, we have Super Volcano Things Fall Apart, and this is by Harry Turtle Dove. That's an interesting last name. This is a 2013, it's a condition of the book, and this is what it's about. An explosion of incalculable magnitude in Yellowstone Park propelled lava and ash across the landscape and into the atmosphere forever, altering the climate of the entire continent. Nothing grows from a tainted soil. Stalled and stilled machines functions only as statu statu statuary. statuary. People have been scraping buy on excess food and goods produ produced before the eruption, but supplies are running low. Natural resources are dwindling, and former police officer Colin Ferguson knows that time is running out for his family and for humanity. So there is book number three. Book number four. We have Himmler's War by Robert Conroy. This is a 2011 copyright. That's what the book looks like. This is what it's about. Only days after the Normandy invasion, Hitler is killed in a bombing raid, and Henrik Himmler, brutal head of SS, assumes control of the Reich. On the Allied side, there is confusion. 
Should attempts be made to negotiate with a new government or should unconditional surrender still be the only option? With the specter of a German super weapon moving closer to completion and the German generals finally allowed to fight the kind of war at which they are masters, the Allies are pushed toward a course of accommodation or even defeat. As casualties mount, will the soldiers of the U.S., Great Britain, and the Soviet Union find the courage and conviction to fight on the face of such daunting odds? And can the Alliance leaders put into place a new plan in time to snatch a victory from the jaws of defeat by the revitalized German war machine? So there's book number four. Book number five. We have Whirlpool by Elizabeth Lowell. This is a 1995 copyright, and this is what the book looks like, and this is what it's about. As a child, Laurel Swan barely knew her father, always an enigma, intriguing and inscrutable. He was an elusive shadow, flitting in and out of her life. Even now, years later, he remains a stranger to her. Still, when a mysterious parcel arrives containing a priceless Fabergé egg, Laurel is certain it came from him, but she doesn't realize that her father's gift has brought death and terror into her world. Against her will, Laurel is being dragged down into a swirling vortex of betrayal and violence, and there's nowhere to turn for help except to cruise Rowan, an ex-FBI agent and her father's sworn enemy, a strong, secretive, and dangerous man. Cruz has his own agenda and is spinning his own webs. And he has her last and only hope. So there you go. Book number five. Book number six, we have Flawless by Heather Graham. This is a 2016. That's what the book looks like. This is what it's about. There's a pub in New York City that's been in Finnegan family for generations. Now Carrie and her three brothers own it. Carrie Finnegan is also a criminal psychologist, a fitting reaction perhaps to her less than lawful teenage past. New York's Diamond District has been hit by a rash of thefts. No one's been killed until now. FBI agent Craig Frazier is brought in to investigate he and Karen meet at a jewelry store in the middle of a heist. She's there to unseal a flawless stone taken by her youngest brother as an act of vengeance. Craig's there to stop the gang. But the police and the FBI begin to wonder if there are two gangs of diamond thieves, the original and the copycat group of killers, who seem to think their scheme is as flawless as the stones they steal. Thrown together by circumstance, drawn together by attraction, Karen and Craig are both assigned to the case. But there's more and more evidence that somehow the pub is involved because everybody goes to Finnegan's. So there you go. Book number six. Book number seven is called Fatal Tide by Iris Johansson. This is a 2003 copyright what the book looks like that's what it's about I like the one that flipped through so you see the condition marine researcher and Mel's Nemad is treading dangerous waters and she's about to be dragged under Melis I think it's her how you say her name Melis knows something that has already caused one oceanographer to disappear from the face of the earth and that's the only part of the past torn by violence and betrayal she thought she had put the past behind her when she arrived at her Caribbean island home to research dolphin behavior, but her peace and her life are about to be shattered by a savage killer who is cutting a path of destruction and death that leads directly to her. Whoever is after her knows her fears intimately, and she soon will be forced to relive them all over again, except for the final nightmare, the one she can't possibly survive. So there is book number seven. Book number eight. This is V.S. Day by Alan Steele. Copyright is 2014. That's what the book looks like. This is what it's about. 
Three-time huge award-winning author Alan Steele imagines an alternate history rooted in an actual historical possibility. What if the race to space had occurred in the early days of World War II? In 1941, and Werner von Braun is ordered by the Ferdo for her for Friar Friar to abandon it looks like a German word. Abandon the V two rocket, yep, and turn German resources in a daring new direction. Construction if a manned orbital spacecraft capable of attacking the United States. When the top secret plan is leaked to Franklin Roosevelt, the president determines that there is only one logical response. The United States must build their own spacecraft to destroy the Germans. Robert Goddard, inventor of the liquid fuel rocket, agrees to head the classified project. So begins the race against time between two secret military programs and two brilliant scientists whose high stakes competitive competition, <laughs> spit it out, will spiral into a deadly game of political intrigue and unforeseen catastrophes played to the death in a brutal skies above America. So there you go. I like the cover of the book. It's like city. So there is number eight. Book number nine. Uprising by Jeremy Robinson. Copyright dates 2014. Of course, these are all softbacks. And this is what the book's about. It's time to wake up a whole new kind of world. Freeman is a genius with an uncommon mixture of memory, intelligence, and creativity. He lives in a world, worldwide utopia, but is not always so. There was a time known as the grind when Freeman's people lived as slaves to another race Referred to simply as master, they were property, but the civil rights movement emerged, change seemed near by the masters and refused to bend. Instead, they declared war and lost. Now the freed world is threatened by a virus spread through bites sweeping through the population. Those infected are propelled to violence, driven to disperse the virus. Uniquely salted, sued, salted. Uniquely suited to respond to this new threat, Freeman researches for a cure, but instead finds the source. The Masters, intent on reclaiming the world, Freeman must fight for his life, for his friends, and for the truth, which is far more complex and dangerous than he ever could have imagined. So there you go. Number nine. Book number ten. This is called Dead Silence by Brendan Novak. This is a 2006 copyright it's a condition of the book. This is what it's about. Grace Montgomery knows who it is and she knows why it happened. She was only 13 the night it all went wrong and now like then she has no choice but to keep her mouth shut. Grace left the town of Stillwater 13 years ago trying to forget, trying to make good. As an assistant DA in Jackson, she finally achieved a success that was supposed to change her life, but it hasn't. So she's come back to confront her own history, which means returning to the farmhouse now owned by her brother and facing the people of Stillwater, a number of whom suspect the truth. Widower Kennedy Archer is one of those people he's running for mayor and needs to stay as far away from Grace as possible, and yet he's in Egnema he can't resist. Even though her enemies are close to finding out what really happened, and that could ruin them both. Enigma. Egnema. What did I say? Enigma is that word. <laughs> Anyways. Here's book number 10. This is why I don't crop my videos so you can hear my funny words come out of me. So anyways, um, I'm going to save the information at the end. I'm under Minda's Bookstore and more on Facebook. If you're interested in these books, you can purchase them ten for $10. And I will post in my Etsy. And I can let you know the name of the Etsy store that it, they are posted in. and uh, Or send you the link. And you send me an email. All the information for the books will be listed below. This is also not just a selling channel. It's also informational. 
because I will put the ISBN numbers below. So if you use Kindles and Nooks, you can also look up these books if you're interested. So with that, whatever time zone you're in, I hope you're having a great one. See you soon. Bye.